Chapter 261. Celestial Sanctum was attacked. Hubby. Willow had returned. At the same time, Sylvia silently excused herself. After Sylvia left, Willow immediately threw herself into Caspian's arms. How was it? Did you have a good time? Caspian asked while stroking Willow's hair. Willow nodded, leaning against Caspian. Yeah, it was pretty good. I managed to take a break amidst the busy schedule. It's a good time to relax. You came back at the right time. Someone just sent over a big present. Caspian handed the gift list to Willow. What is it? Willow took the list and examined it closely. So many properties, and a publicly listed company. This is substantial. Is this for real? Willow exclaimed in surprise. Hubby, what's happening? Willow asked again. She was utterly astonished. These are gifts from several prestigious families in Naporia. Now, they're all yours. It'll be helpful when Southlake Corporation expands its business in Naporia later, Caspian said with a smile. What? These families are so generous, casually giving gifts worth billions of dollars. It's truly unexpected. Willow was pleasantly surprised. She didn't intend to expand the business when she and Caspian came over Naporia this time. They just wanted to enjoy themselves. She would have never expected to receive such an enormous gift. Willow was no longer surprised. Given Caspian's status, it was natural for the families to try and gain his favor. Suddenly, the sound of a stomach growling sounded. Willow's face flushed. Her stomach grumbled loudly. Are you hungry from shopping? Caspian asked in a soft tone. Yeah. Willow nodded, feeling a little embarrassed. Caspian laughed. Perfect timing. I haven't explored Naporia myself yet. I heard there's a food street here. Let's go check it out together. Great! Willow exclaimed excitedly. Caspian held her hand, and they left the hotel together. Meanwhile, in Easton, have you made up your mind? There's not much time left. Make a decision quickly, Billy asked Howard, and the others. He initially thought that the influential families in Easton would be able to make a decisive choice, but it turned out that they were hesitant. This somewhat upset Billy. For him to establish a foothold in Galacrest, Cole had demanded him several times to quickly discuss the countermeasures against Celestial Sanctum with the four noble lineages in Easton. Billy had been patient and spent an hour or two discussing with them. Finally, the heads of the four noble lineages exchanged glances and nodded to each other. Billy, how can you expect us to believe in you when you suddenly appeared and claimed to be a representative of Galacrest? Howard asked, looking at Billy. Howard and the others knew Billy's character too well. When Mahayan Pavilion was still in Easton, Billy did nothing but fool around with women. Without Mahayan Pavilion, he was nothing but a loser. Such a person appearing and claiming to annihilate Celestial Sanctum was naturally unbelievable to them. That's fine if you don't believe me. But this person here, Night Shadow, is the right hand. Man of the Master of Galacrest. Surely you'll trust him. Billy felt helpless and had to bring up Night Shadow. At his words, Night Shadow, who had been standing silently to the side, took a couple of steps forward. Then, he took out a gang emblem from his pocket. Emblazoned on it was the word Galacrest. As Howard saw the word, his expression stiffened. The Galacrest's emblem was extremely unique, and no ordinary person would have the guts to duplicate it. Once discovered, anyone impersonating the master of Galacrest would be dead by all means. Mr. Luckerman, do you still have any doubts about this? Truth to be told, both my dad and I have joined Galacrest. This alliance is an excellent opportunity for you. As long as you agree, Galacrest will help you eliminate Celestial Sanctum. I don't need to say more about the benefits that will follow, right? Billy said with a smile. Billy's offer tempted the four of them. However, Celestial Sanctum was incredibly powerful, beyond what they could confront. If they made a mistake, they would be in an irredeemable situation. Without absolute certainty, nobody dared to act recklessly. What do we need to do? Celestial Sanctum's strength is something we can't fight with. They've trained many ancient martial experts. Howard expressed his concerns. Mr. Luckerman, please rest assured. Melvin isn't in Easton right now. He's gone to Naporia and won't be back for a while. This is an extremely rare opportunity for you all. Seeing Howard and the others hesitate, Billy said helplessly, Moreover, Night Shadow is an eternal Grandmaster, and he can assist you greatly. Hearing this, 
everyone looked at Night Shadow in disbelief. Eternal Grandmasters were ranked the best among the martial experts. Despite his age, Howard was at the highest level of the third tier. But there was still a considerable gap between him and an Eternal Grandmaster. As long as Night Shadow was willing to help, and with Melvin absent from Easton, there was a good chance they could take down Celestial Sanctum. But what if Caspian and Melvin return? Won't we be in trouble then? Howard was still somewhat uneasy. The thought of Caspian made him and the others shudder. Caspian not only possessed formidable strength, but his tactics were also unpredictable. Unless everything was foolproof, Howard wouldn't agree to attack Celestial Sanctum. What a scaredy cat. No wonder you never achieve anything. You're wasting a good opportunity here. Caspian and Melvin won't possibly return from Naporia. Mr. Wilson has already decided to eliminate them. Your worries are completely unnecessary. Billy said impatiently. At his words, a glint flashed in the eyes of Howard and the rest. If Caspian and Melvin were killed, they would no longer have anything to fear. With this realization, the group exchanged glances and then nodded in agreement. It wouldn't be fair to refuse Mr. Jennings after all the advice you've given to us. We've made up our minds. We'll join forces with you to deal with Celestial Sanctum. Howard laughed out. Seeing Howard's agreement, Billy felt a deep sense of relief. As long as he could accomplish the mission, he would become the senior member of Galacrest. Since that's settled, let us act immediately. Seize the opportunity to wipe out Celestial Sanctum. Billy commanded with the air of a leader. Previously, when Celestial Sanctum annihilated Mahayan Pavilion, it became a blood feud. Now, they were finally striking back. The four noble lineages immediately mobilized their forces and launched a sudden attack. Caught off guard, Celestial Sanctum was left without their leader and suffered a deadly blow from the ambush. In a short time, they lost their significant territories and even their headquarters was breached. The surviving members of Celestial Sanctum traveled day and night, rushing toward Naporia, trying to seek Melvin's help. Chapter 262 Who Do You Think You Are? Meanwhile, at Naporia, there was a famous food street located near Eternal Presence Church. The street was bustling with people, and various eye-catching snacks were sold there. This is great, Willow exclaimed, while enjoying her hot dog. Caspian led Willow through the street, eating and exploring as they went along. Every time they passed a food stall, they would sample a little of everything. Willow had been busy with work previously, and rarely had much leisure time. This outing with Caspian made her incredibly happy. Honey, there's supposedly a very famous restaurant here. Do you want to try it? Caspian suggested as he pinched Willow's cheek. Sure, I'm not full yet. Willow agreed excitedly. Later on, Caspian took Willow to a restaurant called South River Restaurant. This is it. Caspian pointed to the name of the restaurant. They have all the specialty dishes of Naporia here. Hubby, it's our first time here. But you seem quite familiar with this place. Willow asked, curious. Who said it's my first time? Back when I led my men fighting across Diatoran, I've been to every inch of its land. Caspian boasted proudly. You and your big talk. Diatoran is so huge. So how could you have possibly been everywhere? Don't try to fool me with your words. Willow gave Caspian a side eye. She didn't believe him, and he didn't bother to argue about it. As the Diatoranian god of war, he had gone to war in many places. However, Sylvia was the one who gathered most of the information about Naporia. Afterward, the two of them entered the restaurant. It was so crowded, with hardly any vacant seats. Honey, it looks like there's no more seat left. Willow frowned. Please come in, both of you. What would you like to have? A waitress, who was smiling brightly, greeted them. Do you have any private rooms? Caspian asked. We happen to have one private room left. That's fantastic. We're lucky today, Willow exclaimed joyfully. Willow and Caspian followed the waitress upstairs. Here's the menu. What would you like to order? The waitress asked enthusiastically. Caspian didn't even look at the menu before answering. Bring one of each of your specialties. Sure. Please wait a moment. The waitress replied and left the room. Hubby, isn't that too much? It's just the two of us. We can't finish all the food. Willow pouted. It's okay. Just eat whatever you can. If we can't finish them, we can bring the leftovers back to the hotel. 
We can still eat them after our exercise. Caspian raised his eyebrows teasingly. Huh. What exercise? Can we exercise at the hotel? Willow didn't understand what he meant. Caspian coughed. What do you think? Of course it's couples exercise. Caspian smirked playfully. Hey, why'd you suddenly bring that up? Willow's face flushed with a tinge of embarrassment when she realized Caspian's hidden meaning. Soon, the food was served. The dishes smelled good and were mouth-watering. Hubby, let's dig in. Willow began eating. This is amazing. I've never had anything this delicious. Willow expressed her immense satisfaction between bites. Willow, no longer resembling the CEO of a major corporation, transformed entirely into a food enthusiast. This side of her was rather endearing. Mr. Zan, this room is already occupied. You can't enter. A shout was heard outside the room. Get lost. I've already reserved this private room. It's my territory. A loud thud echoed as the door to the private room was slammed open. Willow startled at the loud noise and nearly choked since she was eating. Honey, are you okay? Caspian quickly poured a glass of water and handed it to Willow. I'm fine. Willow took a sip of water and shook her head. Caspian's expression darkened. That man must have had a dying wish interrupting him while he was having a meal with his wife. Following quickly, Kyle Zan, dressed in a suit, and a few others walked in. My deepest apologies. Perhaps I can look for another room for you two. The waitress asked Caspian anxiously. She couldn't stop the group from barging in. Suddenly, Kyle slapped the waitress across the face. Imbecile, don't you know who I am? How dare you try to stop me? Are you trying to get yourself fired? The man threatened. The waitress held her sore cheek, and tears welled up in her eyes. Caspian stood up and looked at her. She said apologetically, I'm sorry. They, it's not your fault. You may leave, Caspian said calmly. Relieved. The waitress hurriedly left the room. Who are you? How dare you eat in my private room? Get out immediately. Kyle stared arrogantly at Caspian. Who can prove this is your private room? First come, first served. Don't you understand? You're the one who should get out. Caspian coldly confronted the sudden intrusion of the group. Huh? Dude, do you know who I am? You're being disrespectful to the Zan family. I'm Kyle from the Zan family. Got it. Kyle announced triumphantly. Caspian frowned and asked, Oh, the Zan family that's one of the eight noble lineages in Naporia. Ha ha ha. Are you afraid now? You sure do. Get lost. Kyle became even more arrogant. Who didn't know about the Zan family in Naporia? Kyle was grounded at home for some time earlier, and now he finally had the chance to break free. He didn't understand why Vermont suddenly limited his freedom, but he couldn't hold back anymore. So he sneaked out today. Afraid. I'm giving you a chance now. Apologize to my wife immediately. Or else suffer the consequences. Caspian sneered. As the Diaterranean god of war. When had he even been afraid? He hadn't blinked an eye facing a million soldiers. Let alone someone of this insignificance. Seeing how insolent Caspian was. Kyle's face instantly turned grim. He had lived in Naporia for decades and no one had dared to talk to him like this. As the future heir of the Zam family, he could act freely in Naporia, which also led to his lack of accomplishments in his 20s. Dude, do you know what's going to happen next? I'll make you kneel and beg for mercy, and I'll fuck your wife. She's quite a beauty, isn't she? Kyle smirked. Go ahead and try. I'll make sure you never see the sun again, Caspian sneered dismissively. Asshole. Kyle grew even more furious. This was the first time someone had been so arrogant in his presence. Caspian not only showed disrespect, but also spoke rudely, and he needed to be taught a lesson. But Kyle suddenly changed his mind. He decided to humiliate Caspian by fucking Willio in front of him in this very room. His expression was filled with hostility. Chapter 263 Disabling Kyle. Come on. Take him down. Make him kneel on the ground and watch me play with his wife? I want him to know that going against me is seeking death, Kyle said viciously. Yes. Kyle's men rushed out and surrounded Caspian. Caspian was unfazed as the men closed in on him. Since Kyle thought he could do as he pleased in Naporia, he needed to be taught a lesson. Willow was used to such situations, so she wasn't worried about Caspian's safety. 
She knew Caspian was strong enough to handle these small fry. Hubby, teach this creepy jerk a lesson, Willow said without sympathy. Sure thing, honey, Caspian smiled. At that moment, a few of Kyle's men charged toward them. Bang. Caspian took a step forward. The men fell to the ground. They couldn't even see how Caspian struck. Their visions turned dark before they only felt pain and fell down. Ah. Uh, Kyle was stunned. The men he brought were carefully trained by the Zan family. Each one was a tough fighter who could handle multiple opponents. Yet, Caspian defeated them effortlessly. Caspian smiled and approached Kyle. But what do you want? I told you. I'm the Zan family's eldest son. If you dare lay a hand on me, the Zan family won't let you off. Kyle stammered as Caspian got closer. A crisp sound echoed as Caspian landed a strong slap on Kyle's face. Holding his throbbing cheek, Kyle spun around. He spat out blood, with two teeth mixed in. You jerk. How dare you hit me? Kyle looked at Caspian with disbelief, wondering who Caspian really was to attack him. Caspian ignored Kyle, raised his hand, and delivered another smack. Kyle's face bore five red handprints, and in the next moment, his cheeks swelled up completely. Don't, don't come near me. Kyle stammered. He encountered a madman who wasn't afraid of the Zan family. In Naporia, there were probably only a few like Caspian. Who are you to touch my wife? Caspian struck Kyle three more times. Kyle was left disoriented, trembling on the ground. Caspian walked up to Kyle and said, These slaps serve as a reminder that there's always someone stronger. And remember, don't mess with people you shouldn't. Damn it. You'll pay for this. Stay right here if you've got the guts. Kyle held his throbbing cheek and stood up. Who was talking big earlier? Why aren't you boasting now? Weren't you planning to humiliate me? Caspian chuckled. Kyle was at a loss for words. He felt a chill down his spine as he looked into Caspian's menacing eyes. These few slaps aren't enough, it seems. Caspian declared. Kyle was stunned. At the next moment, Caspian delivered a kick toward Kyle's lower body. Oh. Kyle clutched his groin, rolling on the ground in agony. My manhood. My manhood. I'm done for. Kyle wailed in agony. He never expected Caspian to aim a kick at such a sensitive area. Remember to watch your attitude. I'll be right here. Bring anyone you want. Let's see what you can do, Caspian said, returning to his seat. Hubby? Isn't this a bit too much? Willow asked, concerned. Don't worry, I'll handle it. Let's enjoy our meal and not let them ruin our good mood, Caspian said with a smile. Willow now fully relied on Caspian. She believed Caspian could resolve even the greatest trouble that came their way. The two continued to savor the delicious dishes on the table. Watching Caspian's calm demeanor, Kyle became even more infuriated. He wished he could tear Caspian apart. He tried to stand up, but the unbearable pain from his groin prevented him from doing so. Kyle felt that his life was useless now. With that kick, he might never enjoy himself again. Despite the pain, he quickly dialed a number. Dad, come and save me. I'm at the South River restaurant. Someone attacked me. If you don't come, the Zan family will be in ruins, Kyle cried out. He was asking for his father's help to deal with Caspian. After hanging up, Kyle stared at Caspian and menacingly said, Just wait. Someone will come to deal with you soon. Caspian shrugged it off and continued to enjoy the food. He occasionally fed Willow, and none of them paid any attention to Kyle. On the other side, Aaron received Kyle's call and was furious. He couldn't believe someone dared to lay hands on his son. He had to show them the might of the Zan family. Otherwise, their reputation would be tarnished. In his office, Aaron immediately made a phone call. Is this the head of the security team? Gather all the security guards and come with me to South River Restaurant. A few minutes later, nearly a hundred security guards from the Zan group were mobilized. Some of these security guards were former soldiers, and others were skilled in boxing. Each one had a different background, and their hands had experienced bloodshed to some extent. The Zan family intentionally trained them to become professional fighters. Over 20 vehicles carried more than a hundred people, headed toward South River Restaurant. Inside the private room at South River Restaurant, if you kneel down and beg for mercy now and let your wife serve me well, we can consider this matter settled. Otherwise, when my backup arrives, 
You're done for. Kyle threatened. Enough talk. Tell your backup to come quickly. I'm running out of patience. If they don't show up in five minutes, I'll disable your legs and make crawl out, Caspian said casually. Kyle was taken aback by Caspian's words. Caspian was indeed ruthless. He not only impaired his manhood but also threatened to break his legs. In that case, he would be a complete trash. Meanwhile, the 20 vehicles from the Zan family stopped outside the restaurant. The group of men, armed with knives, steel pipes, and other weapons, charged inside. The diners who were enjoying their meals were terrified and dispersed away. Get out now if you want to live, Aaron shouted as he walked out. In a matter of seconds, the entire room was empty. The restaurant staff were frantic, realizing they might lose a considerable amount of money since none of the customers had settled their bills. Within half a minute, the entire restaurant was deserted. Chapter 264, The Unsuccessful Revenge. Oh, no. The waitress was dumbfounded as she saw the disastrous situation unfold. Today's earnings were gone, and it seemed impossible to explain it to the boss. Mr. Zan, you, the waiter said uneasily, save it. Where's my son? Lead me there quickly. Aaron was impatient. He didn't wait for the waitress to finish and slapped her while shouting. The waitress clutched her throbbing cheek and felt deeply wronged. He's upstairs, on the second floor. The waitress gestured to the upper level. She was slapped, despite doing nothing wrong. Life was just too unfair. Let's go up. Aaron waved his hand, and over a hundred people rushed to the second floor. The restaurant staff felt a chill as they witnessed the chaotic scene that could turn deadly. The manager was also dumbfounded and quickly made a call to the owner on the second floor in the private room. The time's up, but your old man hasn't arrived yet, Caspian said as he stood up. Kyle was now terrified as Caspian resembled a demon. Caspian lifted his foot toward Kyle's shin. The door to the private room was suddenly kicked open with a bang. Who's the idiot daring enough to harm my son? Aaron stormed in. Caspian was about to strike again, but seeing Aaron, he held back. Both Aaron and Kyle seemed to be quite brainless and arrogant. Aaron glanced at the room and saw his son lying on the floor, holding his groin. He felt a pang of sympathy and then a surge of anger. Dad, this jerk wants to destroy the Zan family. Teach him a lesson. Kyle cried for help as soon as he saw Aaron. Crack. Caspian stomped his foot down. Ah. Kyle writhed in agony. Aaron's gaze burned with fire as he fixed his eyes on Caspian. Release Kyle now, or you'll face severe consequences. What consequences? Caspian sneered and applied more pressure. Kyle's face contorted in pain, and his hysterical screams echoed in the room. You jerk. Do you want to die? Aaron was momentarily stunned. He never thought Caspian would be so bold as to break Kyle's leg right in front of him. Caspian disrespecting him was like challenging the entire Zan family. Aaron couldn't contain his rage. Get him. Finish off this jerk. Aaron's face darkened as he shouted. He was infuriated as he watched Caspian assaulting Kyle. Kill him. Aaron ordered. The men behind him charged forward. However, Caspian remained expressionless. Suddenly, he tapped the ground, and he disappeared like a shadow. Caspian maneuvered through the approaching crowd like a phantom. His strikes were swift, and with every shadowy punch, someone fell to the ground. In just a few short minutes, all the men from the Zan family were lying on the ground, forming a heap in the private room. Aaron was dumbfounded. He was surprised that Caspian's skills were so sharp. You, Aaron was seething with anger. The fighters he had painstakingly trained were easily defeated. Are you the scumbag's father? Caspian asked Aaron coldly. Yes, I'm Aaron Zan, the leader of the Zan family. Let my son go if you don't want trouble with us. Kneel down and apologize, or the Zan family will hit back hard, Aaron said firmly. It's quite unfortunate. What's the Zan family? Do you think I'd be afraid? Just look at your son. That's what he gets for meddling with me, Caspian said casually. Aaron stood there in shock. He was surprised that Caspian wasn't bothered about the Zan family's influence in Naporia. Who are you, really? As the leader of the Zan family, Aaron wasn't a fool. He knew that Caspian must have a powerful background. I am Caspian Lynch. Caspian calmly revealed his identity. What? You're the recently elected alliance leader, Caspian. Aaron's face darkened. 
his anger flared even more. It was precisely because of Caspian that the Zan family suffered a loss of $20 million. Now, Caspian almost made his son lose the ability to reproduce. At that moment, anger clouded Aaron's judgment. Dad, you must get rid of this scumbag. I need to go to the hospital now, or I'll be disabled. Kyle wailed. He had never been insulted like this before, and Caspian's kick had almost severed his manhood. If they didn't kill Caspian today, he couldn't swallow this humiliation. Looks like you're not hurt enough. You still want to talk big here. Caspian glanced at Kyle with contempt. Immediately, Caspian landed another foot on Kyle's groin. Stop! Aaron shouted loudly, but it was too late. Caspian's foot had already descended. Ah! Kyle wailed in agony, trembling all over. The intense pain nearly caused him to pass out. Caspian, I will kill you today. Aaron erupted in complete fury. He never expected Caspian to be so merciless. Kyle was the Zan family's only son. He was usually treated with utmost care. Yet, he was now suffering under Caspian's cruelty. Don't think you can act recklessly just because you have the title of an alliance leader. I'm telling you, the Zan family is not to be trifled with. Aaron roared, rallying all his strength. You're a tier 3 expert. Caspian was surprised. The seemingly useless Aaron turned out to be a tier 3 expert. Ha ha ha. Let me show you my true strength. You'll die today for sure. Aaron sneered. Over the years, he had become a skilled ancient martial artist thanks to the resources within the family. Regardless of Caspian's identity, Aaron was determined to avenge Kyle. Caspian chuckled. An eternal grandmaster before him was like an ant, let alone someone with tier 3 strength. He wondered if Aaron's brain was not functioning properly to dare to challenge him. Die! Aaron shouted as he threw a punch at Caspian. Caspian stood still with hands behind his back. As Aaron charged, Caspian lifted his leg and delivered a powerful kick. Ah! Uh, there was a muffled sound. Aaron felt a sharp pain in his chest, and the next moment, he crashed forcefully into the wall. Theft! Thick, viscous blood spurted from Aaron's mouth. He clutched his chest in disbelief. Before he could even make a move, Caspian had defeated him. Aaron and Kyle lay on the ground, looking utterly defeated. Kyle was shocked beyond words. He wondered just how powerful Caspian really was. However, he didn't dare to utter another word. Chapter 265. The Reckless Father and Son. Caspian. Being an alliance leader doesn't mean much. You're in big trouble if you mess with the Zan family. Aaron glared at Caspian. Is talking tough all you've got? Caspian couldn't help but laugh. As expected, his words were just empty threats. At this remark, Aaron's face showed a trace of astonishment. He couldn't believe that Caspian was looking down on him. Caspian then sat down again, looking at Aaron and Kyle with a smile. Do you have any backups? If so, call them now. My patience is running thin, and I'll give you both 10 more minutes. Aaron was surprised. He wondered whether to tell Vermont about the situation. If there are no backups after 10 minutes, you two can crawl out, Caspian said ruthlessly. Hold on. Let me make a phone call, Aaron shouted immediately. He didn't want to miss this chance. Crawling out like a cripple would be humiliating. Aaron could sense that Caspian was a madman with real skills, given that he was able to attain the Alliance leader title. Thinking about this, Aaron gave Kyle a fierce look. Kyle provoked Caspian and now Aaron had to face the consequences with him. After this was resolved, Aaron planned to teach Kyle a lesson. Kyle felt helpless as he noticed Aaron's gaze. He was on the verge of becoming a cripple, and he wondered if he'd even react to women in the future. He just wanted to get to the hospital as soon as possible, hoping there was still a chance for recovery. Afterward, Aaron took out his phone and called Vermont. At the Zan estate in Swallow Castle, Vermont was lounging on a recliner, lazily enjoying his leisure time. Where did Kyle go? Vermont asked the butler. The butler hesitated before answering. Mr. Kyle went out to have some fun by himself. He's such an irresponsible fellow. Vermont said disdainfully. He had lost hope in his son Aaron and had placed all his expectations on Kyle, but neither of them proved to be competent. Kyle was always lazy and never did anything productive. After being confined at home for a few days, he couldn't resist and ran away. 
Kyle had caused trouble countless times since childhood. If he wasn't the eldest son of the Zan family, he would have faced serious consequences long ago. Call Aaron immediately, tell him to handle Kyle. Naporia is volatile right now, and we can't afford trouble during these times, Vermont said. The entire Naporia was uneasy, and it was best not to attract attention. Many eyes were on the Zan family, and any trouble would be magnified during this sensitive period. Yes. The butler nodded, preparing to make the call. Just then, Vermont's phone rang. Hesitating for a moment, he answered and found it was Aaron calling. Where are you? Call Kyle back immediately. Naporia is not safe, and we can't afford any trouble. Do you not realize the southern forces are getting restless? Vermont scolded as soon as he answered. Aaron was stunned and didn't know how to continue the conversation because Kyle had already caused a big problem. Speak up. Are you mute? Vermont grew angrier when Aaron remained silent. Dad. Kyle and I are together at South River Restaurant. Aaron hesitated. What? At a time like this, you're out enjoying yourselves. Come back immediately. Do you think it's the right time to enjoy gourmet food? Vermont was furious. Dad. We ran into some trouble, Aaron admitted reluctantly. What kind of trouble? Vermont asked, his anger escalating. We've been captured and seriously injured, Aaron shouted. What? Vermont stood up abruptly, and a fierce air emanated from him. The butler standing nearby was taken aback. Vermont usually kept a low profile, but the Zan family couldn't be bullied. This was his limit, and he couldn't tolerate anyone disrespecting the Zan family. Who has the audacity? I'll send someone to take care of this jerk right now. Vermont gritted his teeth. It's Caspian, Aaron replied. Caspian, Vermont repeated, feeling a bit uneasy. Yes, the recently elected alliance leader, Caspian. Vermont was deeply shocked. The reckless Aaron and Kyle had chosen to pick a fight with Caspian. Caspian was someone everyone else avoided, yet Aaron and Kyle dared to confront him. The next moment, Vermont slumped to the ground. The butler standing there felt something was amiss. He wondered what had happened to make Vermont lose control like this. You fools, kneel before Caspian and apologize immediately. I'll be there soon, Vermont said harshly, before abruptly ending the call. Prepare the car. We're going to South River Restaurant. Vermont instructed the butler, Mr. Zan Sr., should we call for some assistance? The butler asked cautiously. Vermont slapped the butler. Don't talk nonsense. You think things aren't chaotic enough. Vermont snapped. The butler hesitated for a moment then left to arrange the upcoming tasks. Ah, I hope these two fools didn't anger Caspian. Otherwise, the Zan family might really be ruined by them. Why pick a fight with Caspian of all people? Vermont sighed in frustration. Meanwhile, in South River Restaurant, do you have any backups? Caspian asked with a devilish smile. My father, Vermont, is on his way. You'd better leave if you know what's good for you. As long as Vermont intervened, there was nothing they couldn't resolve. Oh, I'm not that patient. If he doesn't show up in time, you can say goodbye to your family legacy. You're already quite old, so you won't need it anyway. Caspian smirked. Aaron's face turned pale. All he could do was hope for Vermont to arrive soon. Chapter 266, An Unexpected Outcome. Hubby. Willow called out. She initially thought this matter would be resolved quickly. Who knew it would be delayed so long? How's the food, Willow? Caspian turned around as he stared endearingly at Willow. Aaron and Kyle found Caspian's change of attitude unbelievable. Caspian seemed like a completely different person now. His gentle demeanor was a stark contrast to his behavior before. I'm full. When are we leaving? Willow asked. Don't worry. I'll have the waiter bring some desserts, so take your time to eat. We'll leave immediately once I've settled these troubles. Caspian smiled as he continued. Where's the waiter? The waiter outside entered the moment Caspian's words fell. She was already scared stiff of the scene in here. There were people all over the floor, all of them crying and wailing. The most astonishing thing was the fact that Aaron and Kyle were utterly powerless. Defeated, they were kneeling in front of Caspian. This was the Zans they were talking about. One of the eight noble lineages in Naporia, who would dare to provoke them here. Holding their breath in fear, both Aaron and Kyle were completely compliant. Looking at Kyle again, 
There was no trace of the arrogance he had when he first entered. At this moment, the waiter regarded Caspian with new eyes. Who could this man be? How could he beat both of them so openly? Was he tired of living? Do you need anything else, Mr. Lynch? The waiter asked cautiously from outside the private room. Do you have any desserts and fruits here? Bring me a serving, Caspian said. Yes, please wait a moment. The waiter left hurriedly. Soon, a plate of desserts and a fruit platter were placed on the dining table. This looks delicious, hubby. Why don't you take the first bite? Holding a cupcake, Willow held it to Caspian's mouth. Not bad at all, he said, satisfied after taking a bite. Aaron's and Kyle's faces turned grim when they saw how intimate Caspian and Willow were. Lowering their heads, they kneeled in front of Caspian without a single complaint. It's almost time. There's a limit to my patience. Caspian spoke up as he glanced at his Patek. Philippe watch. A shiver ran through Aaron at his words. One minute left, Caspian said. Time passed by the second. It was an excruciating ordeal for Aaron. Five, four, three, two, one, time's up, Caspian said as he stood up. Step by step, he approached the two of them. What do you want to do? Stay away from me, Aaron exclaimed in fear. Lifting his right foot, Caspian was prepared to teach the two of them another lesson. Mr. Lynch, please, spare them. Vermont rushed in at that very moment. Smiling, Caspian spoke up when he saw Vermont. What a coincidence. Then, he retracted his foot. The two of them let out a deep breath of relief. Fortunately, Vermont had arrived in time. My name is Vermont Zan. I'm here to pay my respects to you. Vermont greeted Caspian respectfully. You're quite good when it comes to timing, Mr. Zan Sr. These two would have become crippled if we had played a little longer, Caspian said calmly. Vermont shook his head as he looked at Aaron and Kyle, who were kneeling on the floor. Right now, Vermont's heart was filled with anger. However, he had no way to vent it. More than that, he was fearful. Caspian's actions today were a warning to the Zan family. Dad. Grandpa. The two of them called out as they looked at Vermont. Unable to vent his anger, he unleashed a barrage of punches and kicks on Aaron and Kyle. Useless fools. How dare you provoke a top gun like him? Do you want to ruin our family? Good for nothing. All you can do is fool around and cause trouble. Vermont seethed fiercely. He showed no mercy in his blows. He needed to teach these two a lesson to quell Caspian's anger. The Zan family would be doomed if Caspian really decided to take action against them. Stop. Don't be so ruthless, Grandpa. My crotch still hurts. Kyle pleaded, Dad, please stop. The two of them wailed in pain as they begged for mercy. Vermont finally stopped after a while, as he panted for breath. In his old age, he couldn't maintain such a strenuous action for too long. The two of them lay resentfully on the floor. Already injured, they were now aching all over from the beating. Had Vermont gone mad, how could he beat them so ruthlessly? An unexpected scene unfolded in the next moment. With a loud thud, Vermont knelt directly in front of Caspian. You're a great man, Mr. Lynch. Please don't hold this against us. I'll definitely teach the two of them a lesson. Vermont pleaded regretfully. There were tears welled up in his eyes. Mr. Zan Sr., you reap what you sow. I don't mind this matter. Aren't you afraid that the Zans will be left with no descendants when you give them such a ruthless beating? Caspian replied with a faint smile. Vermont's expression darkened, feeling somewhat speechless. Caspian said he didn't mind it. Why didn't he say so earlier? Vermont wouldn't have been so ruthless if he knew it didn't bother Caspian. Vermont felt a little distressed when he saw Aaron and Kyle, who were all beaten up. These two fools dare to offend you. They are too arrogant. Vermont exclaimed frustratedly. Startled, a shiver went down Aaron's and Kyle's spines. What did Vermont want to do? It wasn't a big deal. It's just that your grandson seems a little arrogant. My wife and I were just having a meal here when he suddenly barged in with his people. Does that seem appropriate to you? Caspian said nonchalantly. Vermont was stunned after hearing Caspian's words. At the same time, the anger in his heart continued to rise. His grandson almost became a cripple just because he barged in while they were having a meal. However, Vermont didn't dare to say anything else. I didn't know the bastard would have the guts to disturb your meal. He should be taught a lesson. Vermont wept. All right, let's turn the page on this matter. I won't hold it against you. 
Caspian waved his hand as he spoke up. Willow and he were enjoying their desserts here. But Vermont's sorry state was making the food appear very unappetizing. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Relieved, Vermont quickly expressed his gratitude. But Caspian's tone changed. Chapter 267, five million worth of compensation. Just when he was about to breathe a sigh of relief, Vermont became nervous again in an instant. Mr. Lynch, B, but what? Vermont stammered as he looked at Caspian. There's no need to be so nervous, Mr. Zan Sr. My wife was spooked by your family. Shouldn't there be some compensation for her emotional distress? Caspian asked pleasantly. Realization struck Vermont. Was Caspian trying to extort money? Oh, of course. I'll compensate Emma's Stewart with $20,000. Would that be acceptable to you? Vermont replied with a smile. $20,000. Do I look like a beggar to you? Caspian asked coldly. His expression had changed in an instant. Vermont was dumbfounded. Was $20,000 considered too little? What about $100,000? Vermont gritted out. Crossing his arms, Caspian stared at Vermont without speaking. Vermont felt uneasy seeing Caspian's demeanor. $500,000. Mr. Lynch, surely this much would be enough to compensate him as Stewart. Vermont finally made up his mind. Willow was a little startled as she sat in her seat. Truth be told, she wasn't frightened at all. After all, she was already used to such scenes. However, Vermont's willingness to offer $500,000 was surprisingly generous. Could you suggest a figure, Mr. Lynch? I really have no idea, Vermont said, resigned. He was about to lose his mind if Caspian was still unsatisfied. He had already compensated $500,000 just because Kyle had barged in on Caspian's dinner. It was already an astronomical sum. However, Caspian still seemed dissatisfied. How much would it take to please him? Honey, how much do you think would be suitable for the compensation? Caspian asked as he looked at Willow. Willow opened her mouth. You said $5 million. All right. Caspian interrupted Willow before she could say anything. Willow was taken aback. She didn't say that. Any amount was fine with her. She never cared about such things. Mr. Zan Sr., my wife has spoken. Five million dollars, Caspian said, as he turned to Vermont. That, Vermont stood still. He wanted to speak, but was unable to utter a single word. Five million dollars was sky, high for compensation. There was no way Vermont didn't realize that Caspian was fooling him. All right. I'll ask my men to send the money to you. Vermont agreed resignedly. It was just his luck. He only hoped that the $5 million would ensure the safety of the Zans. After all, $5 million was nothing compared to the $20 million he had already spent. You're very sincere. I have other matters to attend to, so I'll take my leave now, Caspian said as he stood up. Holding Willow's hand, they left the private room. Farewell, Mr. Lynch, Vermont said hurriedly. He was eager to see Caspian off. Oh, one more thing. I haven't paid the bill yet. So I'll have to trouble you for that. Caspian smiled. Vermont froze in place. It looked like he was about to be swindled again. However, a meal was nothing to him. That's fine. Consider it my treat. Vermont replied as he forced out a smile. Mr. Zan Sr. is indeed generous. I like friends like you. Caspian spoke out, letting out a bitter laugh. Vermont was somewhat speechless. He had no intentions of being friends with Caspian. All he wanted was to avoid trouble. He couldn't afford to be involved in such affairs at his age. Vermont's heart finally relaxed as he watched Caspian's and Willow's departing figures. He understood that this was Caspian's warning to him. It was a show of strength. The Zans were the only family among the eight noble lineages who did not try to appease Caspian. He must have been holding a grudge in his heart. Vermont knew he had to stand by Caspian's side. Now, he had no choice but to be involved in these conflicts. Vermont initially planned to stay out of the matters in Naporia. To put it in another way, he wanted to wait until both Caspian and Cole suffered a defeat before making a move. That way, the Zans would be the sole victor. Unfortunately, he was now forced to side with Caspian. Bastard. Vermont gritted out furiously. Bunch of useless fools. Don't play dead. Get up. Furrowing his brows, Vermont looked at the men on the floor as he kicked them. 
They quickly got up from the floor. They played dead because they knew they were no match for Caspian. It was better to lie down than to stand up and get beaten. Take them to the hospital for treatment immediately, Vermont ordered. In the end, the men lifted Aaron and Kyle in a hurry. Dad, this matter can't end like this. I won't accept this, Aaron exclaimed. Shut your mouth. What else do you want? If you want revenge, get it on your own. I still want to live for a few more years, Vermont retorted angrily. The two of them were carried out after that. It would be a lie if he said he didn't long for revenge. However, he was too weak. He had already investigated Caspian's background. It only took Caspian one punch to defeat the Master of Azure Flames, Aster Stevens, at Vale Dragon Bay. This was enough to prove Caspian's extraordinary strength. Anyone who dared to provoke him now would only be seeking death. Where's the waiter? Vermont suddenly remembered something when he saw everyone had left. Here. Mr. Zan Sr., the waiter answered respectfully. The bill, Vermont said. His face was filled with resignation. Vermont was seething in anger. He had already lost $5 million to Caspian, yet he still needed to pay the bill for him. What was all this about? But he had no choice but to do as Caspian said. After all, Caspian was too formidable. The Zans couldn't afford to provoke Caspian now. They didn't want to be the first among the eight families to be wiped out. Mr. Zan Sr., the total would be $210,000. Round it down, and $200,000 will do, the waiter stated after looking at the menu. What? $200,000? Vermont was at a loss for words. What did Caspian and his wife eat? How could it be so expensive? Don't joke with me. Do you take me for a fool? There's no way these dishes are worth $200,000. I'll kill you if you dare to scam me. Vermont seethed. He was already holding back his anger. Being extorted $5 million by Caspian was bad enough. He didn't expect the waiter to take advantage of the situation as well. It was a simple meal, yet they wanted to charge him $200,000. What in the world did Caspian eat? Fear struck the waiter's heart as he saw Vermont in a rage. They did not dare to provoke him. Mr. Zan Sr., these dishes only amount to $10,000. However, Mr. Lynch ordered a bottle of our finest wine before he left. It's the most expensive bottle in our store. He said you would foot the bill, the waiter explained uneasily. Chapter 268, Mr. Lynch Save Me. Vermont froze on the spot, unable to calm down. He ended up getting tricked by Caspian again. He had thought that a meal would not cost much, but Caspian ended up swindling a hefty sum of money out of him anyway. Vermont was so furious his face turned beet red. The veins on his temple throbbed. He had never been humiliated in this way throughout his decades in Aporia. The waiter dared not speak when faced with Vermont's rage. Will you pay with a credit card or cash, Mr. Zan Sr.? The waiter asked in trepidation after a short silence. Vermont wanted to leave just like that, but $200,000 was quite a big sum. If he refused to pay, Caspian would surely give him trouble should he find out. After some consideration, Vermont decided that he would pay the bill. I'll pay with a credit card, Vermont said with gritted teeth, fishing a card out. Without hesitation, the waiter swiped the card in the machine. $200,000 were deducted from Vermont's balance. Thank you, Mr. Zan Sr. The waiter presented the card back to Vermont with both hands. Vermont looked like he had just swallowed a lemon. His heart hurt so much after paying the bill. Next, he glanced at the food on the table and discovered that most of it was not even touched. Pack everything into boxes, Vermont said sternly. Huh, the waiter was stunned. Are you deaf? I said, pack all the remaining food into takeaway boxes. Vermont repeated in annoyance. He could not return empty, handed after spending $200,000, could he? The waiter was thoroughly stunned. He did not expect Vermont, who was from a prestigious family in Aporia, to take away food from a restaurant. Did he also need to eat food left over by other customers? After this, Vermont left the restaurant with the leftovers. He did not want to see this place ever again. Mr. Zan Sr., wait. Just as Vermont was about to leave, someone called after him from behind. What now? Vermont asked threateningly. Without a place to vent his anger, he was furious, and the sight of this waiter alone annoyed him. Um, uh, 
Mr. Lynch said you're also to compensate for all the losses incurred in this restaurant today. A lot of customers didn't pay today, so noting Vermont's anger, the waiter spoke cautiously. Damn it. Tell me, how much do you want? Vermont barked. The waiter showed him the bills he was holding. His voice quivered as he said, $1.5 million. Swipe my card. Vermont frowned. He had to choose the option of swiping his card again. The waiter pointed at the floor and whispered, Mr. Zan Sr. However, Vermont glared at him in rage, interrupting his words. Shut up. Say my name again, and I'll have my men beat you up. Vermont roared after he swiped his card. He never wanted to see this waiter again. After venting his anger, he turned away and headed toward his car. Thump. Suddenly, he fell to the ground, landing head first. Ow, my back. Vermont quickly climbed to his feet, realizing that the floor was wet. Fuck, who the hell left the floor so wet? It made me fall. Vermont lost his composure completely. Mr. Zan Sr., I wanted to remind you that you should be careful because the floor is wet. The waiter stuttered. Bastard, bastard, arg. Vermont kicked the car door before hobbling into his car. Upon entering the suite in Naporia Grand Hotel, Sylvia said respectfully, Caspian, you two are back. What happened? Caspian asked. Melvin Jones from Clestial Sanctum is here. He's been waiting for you since two hours ago, and it looks like he's here for an urgent matter. Do you want to meet him? Sylvia said. He's waited for so long. Anyway, he can wait for some more time. Caspian waved his hand dismissively. Willow, we're all sweaty after dinner, aren't we? Should we take a bath together? Caspian smirked. Okay, Willow said bashfully, a blush on her face. She did not expect Caspian to say that to her in front of Sylvia. The couple walked into the bathroom while Sylvia returned to her room. At this moment, Melvin waited uneasily in another room. Two hours ago, he had gotten word that Celestial Sanctum was attacked. The four noble lineages of Easton had banded together to attack Celestial Sanctum and had divided its territories between themselves. The sudden bad news made Melvin so anxious he hurried over to seek Caspian's help. However, Caspian happened to be absent, so Sylvia had arranged for him to wait until Caspian was back. When Caspian had left with Willow, he had specifically asked Sylvia not to interrupt him and his wife unless there was an emergency. Melvin did not dare to disrupt Caspian and Willow, either, so he waited. Two hours had passed just like that. As more time passed, Melvin's patience dried up as well. He could not accept that Celestial Sanctum had suffered such a great loss. It had become the most powerful organization in Easton, under his leadership, after many difficulties and challenges. Who knew this would happen to Celestial Sanctum a mere two days after he left the city? Sylvia walked over to him. Seeing her, Melvin asked, Ms. Prost, is Mr. Lynch back yet? Mr. Lynch has just come back, but he's taking a bath. Please wait patiently. You'll get to meet him later, Sylvia said calmly. Melvin was stunned. The situation was so dire now, yet Caspian was still in the mood to take a bath, but he could only hold back his emotions and dared not say anything pointless. He had waited for two hours. Anyway, he could wait for a while longer. An hour later, Caspian and Willow walked out after they were done with their shower. Caspian looked energetic, while Willow was a bit muddled. She walked into the bedroom and collapsed onto the bed. Caspian sent Sylvia a message. A minute later, Sylvia walked in with Melvin in tow. Mr. Lynch, please save me, Melvin said hurriedly the moment he walked into the door. There's no rush, Mr. Jones. What happened? Let's sit down and have a proper chat. Caspian gave Sylvia a look. Sylvia, make a nice pot of coffee for Mr. Jones. Yes, Caspian, Sylvia nodded. Why did it feel like she had become his personal barista? She was honored to be at Caspian's beck and call, though. Caspian settled on the couch, legs crossed. He asked, what happened for you to seek me out so hastily, Mr. Jones? He did not expect Melvin to get up from his seat and kneel before him, begging, Mr. Lynch, you must help me. Celestial Sanctum will be done for if you don't. Chapter 269 seems to have been tricked. Melvin knelt on the floor face wet with tears. Mr. Lynch, the four noble lineages of Easton attacked Celestial Sanctum, and now the headquarters has been invaded, Melvin said, wiping his tears. Caspian's face sank. 
As the Diaterranean god of war, he had fought in wars for years. He had witnessed many tricks and schemes, many despicable and cunning people. However, he did not expect the four noble lineages to do this behind his back. Bastard! Do the four noble lineages want to be kicked out of the country? Caspian said in rage. Mr. Lynch, I want to return to Easton to save Celestial Sanctum, so I'm here to ask for your permission, Melvin said. Melvin was in a rush to meet Caspian, because he wanted to return to Easton. He was here to ask for Caspian's permission. He had brought some of his core members and elite men with him here. If they returned to Easton now, they might be able to get some of the territories they had lost back. Melvin had agreed to work for Caspian, so he had to report such a catastrophe to him. Melvin looked at Caspian expectantly. Caspian said calmly after taking a sip of his coffee, Melvin, it seems that you don't understand the current situation. The four noble lineages of Easton aren't your ultimate enemies. The ones who are supporting them are the people you should fight at this moment. Why do you think they struck all of a sudden? Someone must be supporting them, and the group behind the scenes is Galacrest. You must exterminate Galacrest to defuse the critical situation in Easton. If you don't do so, your return to Easton will be for nothing. But Melvin was stunned. Caspian was not wrong, but the loss of all Celestial Sanctum's territories hit Melvin hard. He had put too much effort and care into Celestial Sanctum, and he had lain in wait for years so that Celestial Sanctum could become the most powerful group in Easton. He did not expect this misfortune to befall Celestial Sanctum. He could not accept it. Follow my command and exterminate Galacrest first. After that, I'll go back to Easton with you and help you resurrect Celestial Sanctum. How does that sound? Caspian said calmly. Got it, Mr. Lynch. Melvin could only agree to it. He dared not oppose Caspian, anyway. He knew what Caspian was capable of. He would be in deep trouble should he oppose Caspian. Melvin, I also have something I want to discuss with you. I have a plan on how to pull Galacrest by the roots. I wonder if you're interested in pitching in, Caspian said with a smile. Forty minutes later, Melvin left the hotel speechless. He had wanted to use Caspian's power to wipe out the four noble lineages of Easton, but he ended up being roped into Caspian's schemes instead. He could only pray that Caspian would really help him reclaim Celestial Sanctum after Galacrest was exterminated. Suddenly, someone bumped into Melvin forcefully. Who's there? You blind, Melvin cursed. Before he could finish his sentence, though, he froze on the spot. Mr. Zan Sr., Melvin looked at the man standing across from him in surprise. It was Vermont Zan, the true head of the Zan family. Melvin had some knowledge about the powerful forces in Easton. Vermont usually kept a low profile. So why was he here today? And he looked quite anxious too. Oh, it's Mr. Jones. Sorry, I was in a rush, so I didn't see you. Vermont was also surprised to see Melvin, and he quickly apologized as well. He stayed indoors in his house most of the time. But he did not stay idle. He had done his research on the many forces in Easton, so he was able to recognize Melvin immediately. Right after leaving South River Restaurant, he brought $5 million over to Caspian. Immediately, he dared not drag it out. And thus, he paid the sum promptly. Vermont felt fear in his heart whenever he thought of Caspian, and he was afraid of offending Caspian. He had lost about $20 million in total ever since Caspian's arrival in Naporia. Vermont felt a bit helpless. He thought of Caspian as a harbinger of bad luck. Even if he was not, why would misfortune befall him again and again ever since Caspian had come to Naporia? Mr. Zan Sr., why do you look so anxious? Melvin asked in confusion. I'm here to meet Mr. Lynch, so I can't talk to you for longer. You're very welcome to visit me at my home anytime, Vermont said hurriedly. Before Melvin could reply, Vermont had already rushed into the hotel. Looking at Vermont's nervous silhouette, Melvin wondered what was happening. Vermont had always been incredibly mysterious, and had not shown his face in public for several years. Why was he suddenly in public now, and why was Caspian the one he sought out? What secret existed between the two men? Melvin had noticed how harried Vermont looked. It meant that Vermont had something to ask of Caspian. At that thought, fear struck Melvin's heart. The noble families in Aporia were all on Caspian's side. If the Zan family was also here to curry Caspian's favor, it meant that Caspian had all the eight noble lineages in his grasp. 
Melvin exclaimed in admiration. He felt inferior in comparison to Caspian the other man, was simply too good a strategist. Caspian had only been in Naporia for several days, and yet he had already recruited the eight noble lineages of Naporia to his side. Not to mention how he was ready to exterminate Galacrest. Even Galacrest would fail to anticipate the appearance of Caspian Lynch, wouldn't they? Some serious trouble was probably awaiting them right now. Something flashed in Melvin's eyes. He had wanted to leave for Easton without a word, his subordinates in tow. However, he entirely abandoned that plan now. Caspian was so powerful he dared not do anything rash. In a luxury suite in the Naporia Grand Hotel, Sylvia asked in confusion, Caspian, shouldn't we help Celestial Sanctum? They're also one of those forces on the good side, aren't they? Sylvia, you fail to see the big picture once again. If a group dominates the area without competition, they'll eventually become evil. Who can be sure that Celestial Sanctum won't end up becoming the next Mahayan Pavilion? Caspian smiled indifferently. Celestial Sanctum used to be an underground force. They had a lot of branch groups too, so they might end up committing illegal deeds someday. Sylvia looked serious upon hearing Caspian's response. So Caspian had never wanted Celestial Sanctum to establish a stable stronghold in Easton. Sylvia understood Caspian's motives, but Melvin was completely unaware. He was working diligently for Caspian without complaint, too. It was obvious how things would end up in the end. What would Melvin think when he learned of Caspian's actions? No one knew. Caspian felt helpless as well. As the Diatoranian god of war, everything he did was for the sake of the peace within Diatoran and the safety of its people. These forces that lorded over a piece of Diatoran's land appeared to be clean, but they often swindled and bullied people secretly. This was what Caspian had to do for a peaceful Diatoran. Someone knocked on the door hurriedly, and Sylvia went to open it. Honored to meet you, Mr. Lynch. Vermont went over to Caspian, and knelt in respect. Mr. Zan Sr., you can stand up. Caspian said. Vermont stood up and presented a check to Caspian. Mr. Lynch, I wish to compensate for Miss Stewart's emotional distress. Here is a check of $5 million. Please, take it. Thank you, Mr. Zan Sr., Caspian said with a smile as he took the check. The situation became awkward soon after as Caspian said nothing else. Vermont was rooted on the spot as well. He was at a loss for what he could say to break the silence. Thirty seconds later, Caspian gave Vermont a look. What's wrong? Do you have something else to say to me, Mr. Zan Sr.? Chapter 270 Working Together Against Galecrest I heard that you're planning to launch an attack against Galecrest, Mr. Lynch. May I know if it's true? Vermont asked, looking at Caspian cautiously. It's indeed true. Are you interested, Mr. Zan Sr.? Caspian laughed. Yes, I am. The Zan family wants to pitch in too, and I hope you will allow it, Mr. Lynch, Vermont said, nodding slightly. After returning to Swallow Castle, and considering it for a long time, Vermont finally decided to take action. Time was running out. The Zans had to do what the other families had done, stand on Caspian's side. Waiting for misfortune to descend upon them was the dumbest course of action possible, and they were not in a situation where they could seek refuge from Galacrest. Galacrest would not allow other families to survive in Naporja. To be honest, Vermont did not want to get into any fight and get involved in this. But the situation in Naporia was ever-changing. The Zan family could no longer pretend nothing had happened. Vermont had to make the right choice. Isn't this a bit too sudden, Mr. Zan Sr.? I can't put my trust in you two, either, Caspian said indifferently. I come prepared to show my sincerity, Mr. Lynch. I have a luxurious villa in Vale Dragon Bay that takes up a sizable plot of land. The scenery around the villa is beautiful as well. I bought it from an auction at $50 million. Now, it's yours. Vermont took a gilded frame out from his bag. This was the deed of the villa. Vermont was gifting someone else a villa costing $50 million. He was admittedly a very generous man. However, he had to do so. The other seven families had given Caspian numerous other gifts as well. If Vermont did not come with something impressive, Caspian might not help him. This was why Vermont gifted this villa to Caspian despite his reluctance. Caspian took the deed. Vermont exhaled in relief. He had lost a lot of money, but that was necessary for the sake of the Zan family. Then, welcome to our side, Mr. Zan Sr. 
Caspian said with a smile. Thank you, Mr. Lynch, Vermont called out, overwhelmed with emotion. Do you have anything else you want to say, Mr. Zan Sr.? Caspian asked. Vermont was aware of what he should do. He knew Caspian wanted him to leave, so he merely nodded. No, I don't. I have something else to attend to now, so I'll take my leave. Vermont left the suite. Watching Vermont's retreating back, an excited grin bloomed on Sylvia's face. Caspian, almost all the forces in Naporia are on our side now. Can we strike and exterminate Gallicrest now? Sylvia said in excitement. There's no rush. We must have a plan before that. Gallicrest has established its power in Naporia and has many branch groups under it. We can't attack if we aren't totally certain. You'll be liaising with the governor of Naporia immediately, Caspian said expressionlessly. Got it. I'll be on it immediately. Sylvia left the suite after that. Caspian was not worried, to be honest. He would have to exterminate Galacrest someday, eventually. Galacrest had established a stable presence here in Naporia, though. An unplanned attack would bring about innocent deaths and casualties. Caspian wanted to wipe out Galacrest while incurring the smallest amount of losses possible. According to Sylvia's investigations, Galacrest controlled various industries and businesses in Naporia. The people of Naporia were exploited terribly, too, and this was why they needed to exterminate Galacrest as soon as possible. Why would he be the Diaterranean god of war if he could not take off some of the burdens on the people's shoulders? Hubby, did someone else come again just now? Willow walked out of the room. She looked drowsy from sleep, as she had fallen asleep right after Caspian had basically taken her apart in the bath. She had not recovered from that despite taking a nap. You okay now? Caspian smiled at Willow. Yes, but can you be a bit gentler with me next time? You were so ferocious in there, Willow said exasperatedly. Her face heated up at the thought of whatever had happened inside the bathroom. We're going to Vale Dragon Bay to look at our new villa, Caspian said. Huh, what villa? I've never heard of it. Willow asked with a confused face. Someone gifted us a luxurious villa there, Caspian said, showing her the deed of the villa. Willow was dumbfounded. They had just been in Naporia for several days, yet they had already received gifts in the form of companies and villas. These people were so rich. Let's go. It's so boring staying in the hotel all the time. Caspian held Willow's hand, and they left the suite together. In the main hall of Galacrest, Cole, perched on his throne chair, looked down at Billy and Night Shadow. You're back so soon. Have you done what I've asked of you? Thanks to you. Mr. Wilson, we've wiped out Celestial Sanctum together with the four noble lineages of Easton, Billy said, unable to conceal his joy. Great. Billy, you've done a great deed. From today onward, you'll be one of the senior members of Galacrest. Cole laughed heartily. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Billy answered, overjoyed. However, Wiley's face gradually sank. Cole had made a very smart move. Not only had he successfully wiped out Celestial Sanctum, but he had also created a rift between Wiley and his son, Billy. Most importantly, none of Galacrest's men were employed in the process. Wiley's son had become one of the senior members of Galacrest. But what about him? As the head of Mahayan Pavilion, it should be completely reasonable for Wiley to become one of the second, in-command members or even a senior member. Now, though, his son had been promoted ahead of him. Wiley was full of anger, but had no way of venting it. Now that he had joined Galacrest, he had to obey the master's commands. Sir, our spies are back, we have important news, Night Shadow reported. Huh, tell me about them, Cole said with a frown. Caspian Lynch seems to have joined forces with the eight noble lineages, as well as Azure Flames and Skyfeather Pavilion, and they want to exterminate us. We will face dire consequences if we ignore this threat, Night Shadow said, appearing worried. Cole had been somewhat happy, but now, his face sank. Caspian had only been in Naporia for such a short time, yet he had managed to create such a scene. Not only did Caspian snatch the Alliance leader position from him, but now, he had also banded together with other forces, in order to wipe Galacrest out. How bold of him. Bang. This bastard. This sly man has been provoking me time after time. What is the point of being the master of Galacrest if I don't kill him? Cole barked angrily, thumping his fist on his thigh. Wiley's heart was filled with glee at the sight of Cole's anger. 
Wiley. At this moment, Cole suddenly turned to Wiley, 